In this problem, we're told to find the moment about P of P about the x-axis, and we're given the moments for the y-axis and the z-axis. So these are actually negative, so that just means when you perform the right-hand rule uh, for this moment about the y-axis or the z-axis, they're actually pointing in the opposite direction as defined. So if you take your uh, right hand, put your thumb along the y-axis, that'll give you a positive moment. So you flip your thumb going downward, I'll give you a negative moment, so if you do that, you actually have a moment going in this direction, which is a negative moment defined by uh, right here. So that's just what it means when you have a negative moment, assuming that we're using a right-hand uh, coordinate system and the right-hand rule. So now that we have that defined, we could actually start doing this problem. So what we're going to do, we're going to define the position vector from O to C, and now we'll use that to find the moment of P about O. So we're going to define this as R, and we're going to define P as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is define R. So R has only, uh, or has all three components. So this is going to be positive 0.35i. And then we're going to have a positive 0.25 sine theta. And the reason why we have a sine theta is because this part of, the, of, the, of this handle is actually sticking out towards the z-axis. So there, it creates a right triangle as seen here. So the y component is actually this side of the right triangle. So the hypotenuse is 0.25 as given by this dimension here, and we're given this angle theta, which is 60 degrees. So that is the y component of this position vector. And then similarly, we can say that, that the k component is 0.25 cosine theta k hat. Now we're going to define the, the force vector P. So we were, we were given that the P is parallel to the ZY plane, which means there's no X component for the force vector. So P is equal to, uh, it's, given at, uh, uh, it's shown at an angle, so then the Y component is simply the sine of that, but it's also negative because it's pointing downward. So it'll be negative P sine phi, and that'll be J. And then for the k component, this is actually going in the positive direction, so we just use the positive cosine of that uh, force, so p cosine phi k. Now to find the moment about O, all we have to do is perform the cross product between these two vectors. So this will be the moment about O is equal to r cross p, and that is simply just a 3 by 3 determinant. So this is how it's going to look. This is going to be 0 0.35, 0 0.25 sine theta, 0.25 cosine theta. And this is going to be 0, negative p sine phi, p cosine phi. And then the top row is simply our unit vectors, i, j, and k. So to perform this cross product, we could say that i is simply 0.25 sine theta times p cosine phi minus this is a minus this times that that's uh this actually makes it a positive so this will be 0.25 p uh, sine phi cosine theta and that'll be in the i direction and then for the j component we cover up the j column to perform the two by two determinant so that would be um, 0.35p cosine phi and then minus 0 so that's that since this is the j column we include a negative so we include a negative for that um, then we could do that and then we're gonna do the k component so this is gonna cover up the k component you do 0.35 times this minus that so that simply becomes plus point 35p sine phi and this equals the moment about O and we can also rewrite the moment about O by by just these uh, components so mxi plus myj plus mzk 
and we're given that my equals negative 20 and mz equals negative 40. So what we can write is by um, actually write uh, m mz is equal to negative 40. So we could say that negative 0.35p sine phi equals negative 40. And for the y component, we could say that equals negative 20. So this will be negative 0.35p cosine of phi equals negative 20. So we can actually define this as p y, or p in the y direction, is equal to 40 divided by 0.35. And then we could define the z component as p z equals um, 20 divided by 0.35. So after plugging in my calculator, we get the y component of the force, which is going to be of uh, 114.286 newtons. And then the z component of the force will be 57.143 newtons. Now I'm going to rewrite the x component of the moment in, a, in this fashion in terms of py and pz. So what I'm going to do here, so this is going to be 0.25 sine theta times pz plus uh, 0.25 cosine theta times py. And that's going to equal, uh, what, what are we going to, oh, this is, the, this is what we're looking for. So we just plug in the values for, uh, for this. And we're given the, the angle theta, which is 60 degrees. So we could just plug in everything we know. So this is going to be 0.25 sine 60. And then this is going to be PZ, which is 57.143 plus 0.25 times the cosine of 60. And then we can multiply that by PY. So 114286. And if, after we plug this in our calculator, what we get is that the moment about the x-axis is simply 26.658 newton meters. And since this is in the, what mx is actually positive or greater than zero, that means our thumb is pointing in the x direction in this diagram. So if you put your thumb in this direction, our, our hands or our fingers curl in this direction. So the moment is going along here, which makes sense with the diagram. Since you're pushing the handle in this direction, you would uh, infer that this rod right here will rotate in, this, in a similar fashion. So the moment here is greater than zero and it equals 26.658 Newtons. We could also define the vector of mx simply by saying 26.658 in the i direction, and we could define the units. So that is just another way to write the moment along the x-axis.